Hi there guys, Mr. Martin here. Thanks again so, so much for joining me. Now in this video, we're gonna be looking at the last in our series of conformity videos that I think we've saved the best till last. We're gonna be exploring today the infamous, the enlightening, the wonderful Stanford Prison Experiment. Probably one of the most famous, infamous experiments in all of social psychology. Now, what we're going to be exploring today is coming at this from a conformity point of view, but just be aware that this is an absolute classic one to talk about in terms of ethics as well. So we could come at this from one of two ways, but let's dive right in. Let's talk about the background to this experiment first of all. Philip Zimbardo in the 1970s has an idea, and he's interested in figuring out whether American prisons are as brutal as everybody says they are. Now, he's heard stories that prison guards in these American prisons are absolute hard asses, real, real nasty people, people you don't want to mess with. So he was interested in whether that brutality was due to the prison guards being themselves sadistic. So did the prison guard occupation attract people who really, really wanted to cause pain to others? Or... Did it have more to do with the prison environment itself? So really what Zimbardo's interested in here is, was the conformity seen within these prisons due to the guards themselves, individual factors, or was it to do with the situation that they were in? How do we figure this out? Yeah, we can go in, we can interview actual prison guards, and we can interview um, prisoners as well. But what Zimbardo chose to do was set up his own fake, make-believe prison to test this idea out. Absolutely incredible. So the whole idea is that he has his own set of prisoners, in inverted commas, and he has his own set of guards as well, and he's going to watch what happens. Do they become sadistic or do they not? So the whole idea, the hypothesis behind this, goes something like this. If the prisoners and guards behaved in a non-aggressive manner so they're just perfectly natural they run their little prison but nothing really bad happens then that supports the individual hypothesis zimbardo can say for a fact yeah prison guards in american prisons those guys are just sadistic they attract those type of people however if the guards and the prisoners in his experiment behave the same way as real prisoners and guards do then this would support the situational explanation. It's nothing to do with the people themselves, it's the situation that they're pushed into. So let's see how Zimbardo carries this amazing experiment out. In the summer of 1973, he gets 21 men together. And at the flip of a coin, they are randomly assigned to either the role of prisoner or guard in a simulated prison environment. Now there were two reserves to this and one dropped out eventually leaving your standard 21. That's 10 prisoners and 11 guards in total. Let's talk about the prisoners first. The prisoners experienced prison life just like any other criminal would be. They were arrested, put into the back of a police car, uh, they were fingerprinted, they had their photograph taken, their proper mug shot, and then they were taken to prison. The prison here is in Stanford University. It's in the basement of the psychology department. But Zimbardo made it look like a prison. He put bars on the windows. He had um, little guard stations set up. The whole place looked pretty, pretty grim. So it was a really convincing environment. What about the guards then, the 11 guards in this one? Well, this is kind of what they looked like here. The guards themselves were all dressed identically. So they had a uniform to wear, khaki, similar to the prison guard uniform of the time. They had a whistle and they had a billy club as well. A billy club is like a truncheon, it's like a, a, a nightstick, it's used to beat people up. They wore reflective sunglasses so that they could never have eye contact with the prisoners. Now they worked in shifts for this, so we had a constantly rotating series of guards, but this means that the prisoners were never unattended. They always had the guard presence there. And Zimbardo said to the guards, I want you to do whatever is necessary to maintain order, get the respect of those prisoners and keep them in the prison. The only rule was no physical violence. 
And of course, this means that psychological violence was perfectly acceptable. So we've got our experiment running. Let's see what happens next. Do the guards just treat it as fun, a little kind of joke? Or does something more sinister happen? Well, this is psychology, guys. What do you think? Turns out what happens next is absolute brutality. The prisoners conform very, very quickly to the expected role as prisoner. They become submissive. But the guards become aggressive and assertive. They demand obedience from the prisoners. They make them march up and down singing. They make them do push-ups. They get them up in the middle of the night. They barricade their doors in. They take away their mattresses when they don't obey. They take away their toothbrushes. They make them clean the toilets with their bare hands. Absolute brutality. At the same time, the prisoners are so dependent on the guards that they find ways to please them. They tell tales on their fellow prisoners. They, they want to get the uh, other ones into trouble. They start to cry. They weep. They're weeping for their mothers because they don't know what to do. A priest comes in halfway through and just to see if the guys are okay. And the prisoners all identify themselves by their number, not their name, their number. They had become so keyed in to the fact that they were prisoners that they forgot who they were. Absolutely amazing. Now, it was originally designed to run for two weeks. Zimbardo has to abandon it after six days because he's so concerned at what these guys are doing to each other. He's concerned that there's going to be something very, very bad that happens below. At the end of the experiment, the guards say, oh, they're pretty sad that it ended. They were getting really into it. The prisoners, however, well, they also say that they were sad they were over it. it was, they were actually quite enjoying the whole procedure, even though it didn't really look like it. Now, what can we conclude from this? Well, what did Zimbardo conclude from this? He concludes the following. He says that what's happening here is because the prisoners and the guards in his experiment reacted so strongly, then they are stereotyping the roles of prison guards and prisoners. They're almost kind of emulating what they've seen on TV or what they've seen in newspapers. So this to Zimbardo gives a little bit of support to the situational hypothesis. The prison environment is an important factor. None of the people in this study showed sadistic tendencies beforehand. None of them showed indications that they were going to collapse and you know start being absolutely submissive. It was only when they were put into prison that these little quirks start coming out in their personality. So Zimbardo ultimately concludes that the situational explanation of behaviour is correct rather than the individual one. This tells us something huge about conformity. Let's evaluate this study very, very quickly. Um, and there's a lot to say, as I'm sure, but the first thing we'll say is obviously ethics. Now, these guys are put into a pretty unique situation. They have no real idea of what's going to happen next. Zimbardo is very fairly criticised because he has no idea what's going to happen. However, after a huge amount of psychological evaluation and counselling after the experiment was over, every single man in the experiment came out unscathed, physically and mentally. So it's got an ethical consideration here, but ultimately the guys were fine. So we can maybe put a question mark next to that one. Second thing, we have to consider whether this is demand characteristic. Were the guys just acting as prisoners and acting as prison guards rather than really getting psychologically into it? Well, yeah, you can criticise it that way, but due to recordings that we have of the prisoners and prison guards, we can tell that they were actually truly absorbed into the role. They weren't acting, they, they turned up on time, they, they weren't demanding extra pay, nothing like this. They were doing it simply because they thought they had to. Thirdly here, we can maybe question the, the validity in this one. Yeah, we've got American guys and it's a, a very small subsection of society. But again, it's not really a big thing here. Since then, this experiment hasn't really been done again. We can assume, however, if it has been done again, that we would see much the same roles. Or would we? We don't really know. That's a, a potential criticism. And ultimately, we're looking at some real life implications here. So the Stanford Prison Experiment, absolutely amazing in its time. What have we learned from this? We've learned that juvenile prisoners must never be incarcerated alongside adults. We know that adult prisoners are so ingrained into their role 
that there is actually a capacity that they'll hurt each other rather than get along uh, harmoniously. So we have to keep juvenile prisoners separate from the adult population in prison. It also led indirectly to the build-up of ethics committees. This was such a big ethical minefield that now any psychology experiment you want to do has to go through a huge checklist of ethical considerations. We have to make sure that, number one, no physical harm is going to come to your participants, and number two, no psychological harm is going to come to them either, among a huge number, literally hundreds of other things you have to take into account. So indirectly, because... Philip Zimbardo is so kind of laissez-faire with his participants. Now we have even more protection than ever before. Really, really cool experiment into conformity. I'm sure you agree. Key concept here, guys. So long as you can explain the Stanford Prison Experiment, you're off to a winner. Remember, it's the prisoner guard roles themselves that the participants are conforming to. It's nothing to do with their individual personality, at least according to Zimbardo. It's all to do with the situation. So this is another little bit of weight to these situational factors of conformity. Thanks very much for listening, guys. Hopefully that's a reasonable introduction to the Stanford Prison Experiment for you. There's loads, loads more to think about in this study, but I'll put a, a clip in the, uh, the description below so you can look at that at your leisure. Until then, guys, thanks so, so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Cheers!